she started to cough up a little bit of blood. Oh my God, her daughter said immediately. She grabbed her munchie, we have to go to the hospital. Took her down to the hospital, and they did some x-rays on her to determine what's going on. And what they found, that her lungs were covered, were covered in lesions. What they had said was her whole body was, her whole lungs were full of tumors. And they determined that while it's probably cancer, they didn't do any additional tests at that time, but they said it was so covered that there's nothing that they can actually do right now. So they sent her home with some very hard painkillers. When the doctor sends you home from the hospital with only painkillers, something really, really serious is going on. Well, she was thinking that, my goodness, this is not something that is good for me. I still want to have my grandchildren. I still want to play with them. So immediately she went home and she started changing the programs that she had in her brain about her health. And she started to reprogram and reprogram and reprogram. She started to create new image for herself in her brain. Within 18 months, Mrs. Toth completely cleared every tumor in her lung to the point where she lived another 15 years and she was able to play with her 12-year-old and 13-year-old grandchildren. 18 months and completely got rid of all of those tumors that were in her lungs. So the mental state is what is absolutely important to your health in the long term. In the short term and in the long term. Jose Silva discovered many years ago that there's four, four levels in your brain. There's four, your brain emits certain energy waves. It's like electricity. The brain waves are broken up into four levels. There's the beta level, the alpha level, the theta level, and the delta level. The alpha level is the level that he calls, it's the natural rhythm of your brain. So when you're a child up until about 15 years of age, you're operating at this alpha level. The alpha level is also the same level you're at just before you fall asleep and just after you wake up. Okay, so it's that kind of hazy time where when you're just about to wake up and you could fall asleep and you think you're sleeping only five minutes, but then an hour has passed. Who's ever had that happen, right? Or just before you're falling asleep and you're dozing away and all of a sudden you fall asleep and then you wake up and it's like two in the morning. Okay? So that's what happens. That's that area, the alpha level. And this is the part of your the brain when that your brain emits that level is when you're most susceptible to creating very deep ingrained programs. The deep ingrained programs also occur, for instance, when you're exercising. Or when you're doing something that you're very involved in. It could be gardening, exercising, walking. It could be doing some work that you're really focused on. It could be daydreaming. It all emits, at that time is when you're emitting this alpha wave. And during that time is when you're most susceptible to creating deeper and stronger programs. Dr. Herbert Benson of Harvard in the 1970s started to discover and do much research on what actually happens in the South state. And is there a connection between the body and the mind? And what he did, and what he called it, was the relaxation response. That when you go into this alpha state, this relaxed state, that you also get if you go through meditation, regular meditation, your body automatically starts to heal itself. It starts to create that healing system especially from illnesses that are stress-related. He found that cholesterol automatically decreases. Who here has been looking at a cure for cholesterol? Right? Regular relaxation automatically decreases cholesterol. Doc, Professor Herbert Benson and he actually set up at Harvard University the Mind-Body Center for Medicine. He did research on over 40,000 different patients using different control groups and he proved again and again that just by regular relaxation 
there is a decrease, natural decrease in your cholesterol levels. Lactic acid decreases. Lactic acid that develops in your body from physical exertion decreases automatically. Your brain oxygen level increases. You're getting more oxygen to your brain, helps your brain work more efficiently, automatically just from relaxing. Your metabolism improves. Automatically your body starts to take on a more healthy metabolism just by relaxing. And finally, the blood supply increases. So the blood in your body automatically starts to move better, more efficiently, with less work from the heart. All without medication, all without pills. In fact, what he understood was that 20 minutes of relaxation is equal to three hours of sleep. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have to sleep. What it means is that your organs receive three hours worth of relaxation in 20 minutes of meditation or relaxation. Now, in his book, he has a very simple relaxation technique that you can learn. It's also in here in the book, which you can download free. When you sign up anyway, you can download it free at the silvamethodtoronto.com website. The simple relaxation exercise is just sitting in a chair, and you don't need anything extra for that. But the most important part to really start to get to a real level of health is to clean out your mind. Like here on the right, there's all kinds of stuff in there that we don't want. Somebody else put it in there, perhaps, and we have no idea about it. If we look at this iceberg, it gives us an example or an idea of how much subconscious information is in our brains which we have no idea about. All kinds of programs that are running. Just like the icebergs, 90% of what's here we're not aware of. But we're going to do a simple exercise at the end of this class, at the end of this uh, talk, and you're going to get a chance to start to uncover some of those things that today are blocking you and getting that health that you want, or perhaps whatever else it is that you want. So the thoughts that we aren't aware of are 90% of what's there. For instance, what are we going to do? It's going to be very simple. We're just going to kind of look at what are the things that we say to ourselves on a regular basis. Negative things and positive things. The negative things that we say can be simple things like, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Whoever says that, who's got a, I'm so tired? Yeah. And are you tired? You are, you start to develop that program because it's just running by the chauffeur, right? He's just the driver, he's doing what we're telling him to do. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that and we're gonna say, I'm gonna feel more energy every day. How do I reverse the negative thought into something that supports me, right? Because what we want in our lives ultimately is to think supportive thoughts. For instance, I have so much stress. I take a walk and I'll calm down easily. Or say, I don't have time for myself. Who has a problem with time? Time comes up often. I don't have time, I'm very busy, right? Well, you know, taking time for myself is important for me and my health. We have these programs that we're running and we don't even know it. <clears throat> so let me tell you a story about Betty Perry. Betty Perry in the 1980s, she was a registered nurse and she was working in the emergency unit. She had a stroke. She was young, just over 50. Her left leg and her left arm were almost fully paralyzed. She could still use her left leg for walking and she could use her left arm for kind of like lifting and moving things as long as she would push it against something else. Her left leg was a bit of a problem because it was getting stuck in the doorway because she would be pulling it behind her like this and it would get stuck in the doorway. So she had to put a brace on it. So the brace, she'd be lifting it and moving forward. Well, she lived like that for a couple years and she didn't like it at all. So she decided that she's going to do something about it. But the hardest part for her was is that she worked in a hospital where she saw stroke patients who just got worse and worse after their stroke. They deteriorated physically and mentally. So taking what she learned in the Silva Method, which are very similar to what's in here in this book, she started to program herself and started to change the way she thought about her health. She imagined herself 
driving her car. Her biggest desire was, you can imagine, in Florida, if you can't drive around in your car, you're not going to get very far. She wanted to have the independence again. She wanted to drive her car, and she wanted to dance. And these were deep, deep rooted feelings inside of her. And they programmed her brain deeply, and she just visualized and focused on these pictures. Within six months, she noticed that one day when she was preparing a roast for some friends that she was having over for dinner, when she brought the roast out of the oven, and she started to walk over to the table and put the roast down, it slipped and touched her leg. Ow! She felt the heat. Until now, she didn't feel anything. Immediately, that gave her more strength and she started to program more and more. And within 18 months, she completely, completely got rid of all the effects of the stroke. She was driving, she was dancing, she was back to normal. In fact, she felt more alive than ever. And she was so pleased about that that she actually took the program that she, and she became an instructor in the social method so that she could teach other people on how to overcome their illnesses. <laughs> Judith Salma was a woman who had right, a slip disc. And you know, who here knows what happens when you have a slip disc, right? It's pushing, that little cartilage just pushing against all the nerves. And it's painful. Now if you go into the doctors and what do they typically do? They cut it off. Now how many of you would you like to get a piece of your cartilage cut off? Is that really serving you in the long term? Because typically, patients who have slip discs will come back again and again, and they'll just have another surgery. Well, she decided that that's not her. She started programming using the techniques that you can find in this book, and within six months, went back and her new x-ray showed that there's absolutely nothing there. She regenerated her body like normal. Now maybe that's a surprise. But if you look at it, the cells in your body are regenerating constantly. In fact, the outer layer of your eye is regenerating every day. Your skin, the outer layer of your skin, is regenerating every seven days. Why do you think you use, lose your tan so fast? You're constantly regenerating. In fact, you have a new liver every 30 days. So the cells, the natural rhythm of a cell, is to reproduce and die after a certain amount of time. That's the natural process. So by engaging our body's natural process, we're able to focus the energy on where it's needed. How many of you know that a lizard, when you pull off its tail, will grow it back? Now who here is smarter than a lizard? Everyone, I hope, right? So if a lizard can grow back its tail, why couldn't we? I'm not saying cut off your arm and grow back. The other, another one. But what I am saying is you can take the opportunity to use your body's natural healing mechanism and start focusing the energy on creating benefits and improvements to your own health. Adam Bolo. Adam Bolo was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. The doctors were giving him anti-inflammatory medication, they were giving him hormones, but multiple sclerosis, as far as we know, is incurable. But he had a dream. He was young, and he wanted to run the ultra marathon. For him, it wasn't enough to be limited to a wheelchair or some mobility device for the next 60 years of his life. So taking the course, the Silva Method, he started the program using the techniques. Within 12 months, he came to the point where he was able to run a regular marathon. Within two years of using the system, he was at the point where he had created for himself a 212-mile run around Lake Balaton in Hungary. That was his dream. From multiple sclerosis, incurable disease, to moving to a 212 run. 212 kilometer run. Agnes Collender was diagnosed with an extremely rare disease. 923 people in Germany were ever recorded of having this disease. What had happened was between the 6th and the 12th vertebrae, the blood flow stopped. 
completely. And there was no more feeling left in her legs. In fact, what she noticed is one night, her legs started to feel very, very heavy. And she felt this excruciating pain. By the morning when she had woken up, from her navel down, she was paralyzed and in pain. And she couldn't get out of bed. She went to several doctors, and all they did is sent her to different, different specialists. But none of the specialists could do anything. So finally, she got herself together. She went out to Germany because she had heard that something there can happen. Something there is positive. And what they did is they told her, I'm sorry, the most we can do for you is to give you a wheelchair. In fact, she was so depressed that she jumped out of the sixth floor window of the hospital in winter. She didn't die. She broke a leg and an arm. The nurses found her the next morning, freezing with a fever. They brought her up. She got out of this fever and she decided that she has to do something. Because she said at this age, she wants to have grandchildren and she wants to live a full life. She wasn't able to commit suicide, for goodness sake. So she read Jose Silva's book, and following the study in the book, she started to build and rebuild herself. Within three years, within three years from an incurable disease, she got to the point where she's walking on her own, her hands are moving, she's physically not feeling pain, and she says that she has 80 to 85% of her mobility back in three years. In five years time, she said, She's still at the level where she's not 100%, but knowing that she is the only person that has ever cured herself out of this disease, and they have done a video with her, which you can find at the Fachlich Ersensberg in Germany, the hospital, is a video of her that they use as motivation for rehabilitation of other, of other people in illnesses. There are hundreds and hundreds of stories like this. Margaret Chismazia, she had immune deficiency and cataracts. She cured them both using the Silva method. These are all people that have gone to the doctors and looked for cures, for help. What is it that I can do? How can I improve my health? And they couldn't give them anything, anything more than a symptom diminisher. But it didn't cure the root. It didn't take it out and throw it in the fire. In fact, Dr. Carl O. Simonton, also a student of the Silva Method and an oncologist, found that his patients weren't getting much better. So what he did is he found the Simonton Center, which uses the Silva Method to help cancer patients to survive. Whether they're taking chemo or radiation, he works together with the doctors and the patients and the families to create a 95% survival rate in the cancer patients that come. 95% have no remissions after that. He has now founded three centers around the world with the fourth one coming. And he says, about the Silva system, I would say it's the most powerful single tool I can offer my patients. Because it's all about here. Everything that you need, you have the power to use right now. So let's do a little exercise if you're up for it. Vaik, if you pass out those sheets, what I'm going to give you is a sheet. Hopefully, if you have a pen, we have a few pencils that we can provide. Because you're going to have, there's two sides, two sides to the sheet. On the left side in red, you'll see the question, what am I thinking? And what I'm going to ask you to do is write down what you're thinking. Any negative thoughts that you have about health or any other place in your life. I'm just going to ask you to write it down, write down any of these thoughts, and, and be as honest as you can with yourself. Tell the truth, because we have to tell the truth in order for us to step to the next level. So once you've written down these negative thoughts, whatever you have, on the right side I want you to take a few minutes and write a new thought, a better thought, next to it.
So if you're going to say, I'm so tired, I'm always tired, write to it, it's easy for me to get up. Or, I get a lot of energy when I think positively. Or, I feel happy when I smile. Anything that for you, inside engages a bit of power. Okay, so when you say it to yourself and you read it, you want to feel better. Because if you don't believe what you're writing down, it's going to be hard to get it. Okay? So you want to make sure that it ignites something inside of you and you believe what you write down. Okay? So just take a couple minutes and just start writing it down. Here. And once you've written down a couple, then start rewriting it in a more positive way, in a way that you can believe that empowers you, that you feel better about. You can even say to yourself, I feel tired only on Sundays. Right? Be playful. 